Hey guys, it's Kelsey. I'm back with Off the Board with Pineapple Papers, and today we had another group challenge to use a pin in a non-traditional way. So I chose a Valentine's Day pin to use for a Christmas layout. I know a lot of people are talking about maybe using a Christmas pin to make a summer layout or vice versa, but we could pretty much use it any way we wanted. I thought it would be fun to use a different holidays pin for Christmas. So I thought that Valentine's Day is appropriate because it's super, super different, but there's also a lot of red represented in, in Valentine's Day and I still have Christmas products I want to use. So that pin was very um, red and white, but there are pops of black and a lot of the photos were grayed out behind the pop of red. So I thought that I had enough products left in this. I think it's the Holly paper pad from, or paper um, collection from Felicity Jane. Uh, to do this. So right away I am starting with a red and white polka dot for my frame But there is this gray kind of linen print that I'm going to use as my main background and I thought right away that really represented that mood board well and The mood board itself was framed in red So I like that that I had a pattern paper that was red framing my gray layout I really wanted you to be able to look at this pin uh, for Valentine's Day and see it clearly on my page but yet see that my page was Christmas. That was my goal and this was a lot of fun so I'm really glad that we came up with that challenge um, because I think it worked out super well and I would have not have made this layout this way. I have I think like six papers still for um, for this collection and, and most of them are green but I pretty much put anything that had green away and I pulled out everything that was red and white and gray. Uh, in black and that's what I'm using to create this layout. So I'm just getting the 12 by 12 down. I know I want this frame. I know I want this gray to be the main background in the middle and then I'll go from there. I definitely want to use this red and white stripe paper um, for my main layer around the photos. I have three photos here. This was um, Christmas last year with my grandparents on my dad's side and so we visited them. We got a couple of photos so I want to make sure I document that. And uh, I just decided to frame them all in white. Thank you, Christina, for the tip. Um, she had mentioned that to mat her photos, she goes to Hobby Lobby and she gets the uh, Paper Studio pack of four and a half by six and a half white cardstock. This is genius, okay? The pack has a hundred sheets in it. They're six dollars, but uh, Hobby Lobby pretty much always has 50% off on their own products, which is the Paper Studio. I got this pack of 100 white sheets for $3, and it's the perfect size to be able to mat all of these photos. So I've been using that to mat photos with instead of having to cut into a 12 by 12, and it's genius. So thank you for that tip. That is an awesome hack for a scrapbooking. Uh, so that's what I used to mat all of these photos. Now I'm just trying to create my layers here. I was trying to figure out how to make this stripe look like a bigger block so it could frame all of these photos. Um, the photos hang off the edge a little bit, which I like. I think that's a cool touch that it's overlapping these photos, but I'm trying to figure out a way so it looks cohesive and just not super patchworky. Um, there's a lot of ways you can kind of make this look layery and not pieced together, even though it is very pieced together. So I know I want something like this. I'm not sure how I'm going to complete the layery look because it still looks very awkward, but I decided just to stop for a minute and lay out all my embellishment to try and figure out what else I'm doing with this, um, with this collection. I've been really good about getting a girl on every Christmas layout so far. This is the last one I'm making. This is the last Christmas layout. This is number four and there's one girl left. I'm pretty sure her name is Joy. She's really cute. She is, has a black and white skirt and a green sweater. She's carrying these box of presents and there's no green on her. She is perfect for this color scheme and I thought it was just gonna be, it was made. So I'm gonna try and get her on this layout. I really like this piece I already fussy cut from a pocket card that says December and it just is ringed with the word memories. I thought that would be a really cool embellishment to try and get on here. So I'm really trying to create a cluster here in this open space underneath the four by six but it ends up just looking kind of awkward. I can't figure out what looks good to my eye. It just looks weird, so I end up taking it off and working on something else. But I'm just trying to figure out, um, I kind of got stuck layer-wise, so I was trying to figure out embellishment-wise what I was going to do, and then maybe that could get me unstuck for <laughs> the layers. Um, I thought about using these two holly bits. I think those are super cute, but they introduce green. So I'm, I keep trying to like pull green in just because it's habit, it's Christmas. I want green on here too. But I keep revisiting my pin. I'm like, you know what? 
This pin really stood out because of how bold it was, because it was black and white and gray with these pops of red. And so I end up taking everything green out and I think it ends up looking really cool. <laughs> um, but I keep trying because part of me is just like, it's Christmas, I want green on here. But I'm like, you know what? This is the fourth page um, and the other three had red and green. Like for this one layout, do the pin, it's gonna look cool. So they sit there for a minute while I try and figure out my life. I don't know where I went <laughs> trying to figure out what else to do. Um, but yeah, they end up coming off. They sit there for a while. I did have this branding strip though that is the red and black stripe and I thought that would be really cool to introduce because the pin was so bold with the black and white elements. Um, so I think maybe that could be a cool element to have at the top there. Here I go to pulling things off, but here's Joy. I think she looks so cute. She sits so well right there next to that smaller photo. Um, and then I, I figured I'd pair her with her, this little scallop detail, but I think that looks so cute. <laughs> so I definitely want her on here now. I'm gonna go ahead and get tape on her because she's for sure staying. I think that was perfect. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with how everything's sitting. So I'm gonna try and get these layers I have so far glued down, but I definitely want other things because it's looking weird still. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I like the bold solid red pops too, but I don't want too much of it just because it's a solid and I feel like it, it grabs your attention, even though there's all these smaller scale pattern papers that are already here. <laughs> um, but yeah, I trimmed the black and white branding strip a little bit just so that um, was more to size. I definitely want something on top of the four by six in this upper right hand corner. Um, so I'm not worried about those ends not lining up because I know I want something they're covering it, so I'm not worried about that sticking out a little bit. But I am gonna go ahead and glue down this girl. She's definitely staying. <laughs> She's so cute. I love the Felicity Jane girls. When I first started using Felicity Jane, I'm like, I'm never gonna use these girls. They're so cute, but I'm, I'm not gonna get them on a page. And they have become like one of my favorite things in the collections when they have these little die cuts with them. I adore them. <laughs> um, See, so yeah, I got the scallop gl glued down too. Those two are definitely staying. <laughs> But I'm back to the same conundrum now where I'm trying to figure out this whole layery thing. I need something on the right here. I'm thinking maybe if I tuck in a tag, um, but that one wasn't really working. I was really kind of want a more of that solid red because I have that solid red strip on the left here and I think that really draws your eye. So I want a solid red piece on the right here. I'm back with this holly because it fits well there. But again, I'm like, no, I don't want something with green. So I pull in this white bow. I think she complements uh, Joy really well because she has some, you know, textures in her skirt. So I think this bow kind of replicates that fabric look. Um, but it's white and it kind of blends in again. So I'm thinking maybe I will do uh, a, just a layer behind the bow that it can stand up on. But I kind of get stuck again, so I re decide to look at something else. <laughs> and I thought because they have the black and white branding strip on the top, it'd be cool to pull some black into the bottom of the page. So we just added a layer of this plain black paper with a torn edge. And I think it looks so cool. I love it. And it pulls the black down. There's not a ton of it, but I love that the torn edge kind of breaks up the boxiness a little bit. Um, so yeah, I love that detail, but I already had the black out, so I figured if I am gonna use this bow, I want it to have a little bit of dimension. Again, I'm kind of out of my dimensional stickers right now, so I just decided to make this die cut into more of a, a card, uh, what do you call it, chipboard piece, uh, by layering a bunch of papers behind the bow, but it gives it enough dimension to where it stands up, uh, and I think that looks nice, <laughs> but I definitely want something behind it. Now the bottom is looking very bold. I do love this black and white branding strip on the top, but that upper right hand corner is looking bare. I need something. So um, what I end up doing, I don't know if I'm doing it now or not. I'm still trying to mess with this bow, but what I end up deciding, you'll see in a minute, I take another scrap of the red solid and I use a tag from my stash to cut a new tag and it's like perfect. It fits up there so nice and it pulls in the red solid over there too. So the red solid is not by itself on the left here. <laughs> and I think that makes all the difference. Um, but I did want something with this bow, not just the tag. So I did have this little red label bit that I'm coming having uh, behind the bow too. And I think that red is a brighter red than the red in these pattern papers. It's the same red that's in the Joy die cut. So I wanted to make sure I represented that brighter red that is in the scallop by Joy and Joy's shirt 
um, up in the other cluster too. So that's why I decided to pull that in. <laughs> but here I am, I found this other scrap of the red. I have a couple scraps of the red, but I'm trying to figure out how to make this look similar to the red scrap that's on the left, but helps beef up the cluster as well. So what I decided to do is use a scrap, turn it into a tag. Um, again, the left there, you see a bunch of red and black hole reinforcers. That was nice. I've used a black hole reinforcer for this tag. I think it looks really nice. And um, I kind of got that figured out for the bow, but I used this other scrap to make it look like it's a really long tag to run behind this photo and kind of end at the same place that the red scrap does on the left side, just so that's more balanced. And I think that was a nice solution to the problem, but it's also kind of funky. So it worked out really well, <laughs> but I just threaded that with some uh, red and, or not red, black and white twine. And again, I think that helps pull in the black and white that I already have. And I think this layer wise kind of completes my layers, but I think that that looks really cool. <laughs> uh, so I'm just trying to glue down all of these little bits to get into one piece. I still haven't glued any of these to the background because I see how much of the background is covered with all of these layers. So I definitely want to gut the, this huge chunk of this gray piece um, to use for future layouts. This is the, the last layout I'm getting out of this collection, but I still have like plenty to get at least two more out in the future. So uh, for another Christmas layout or, or something, uh, you'll see this collection again. <laughs> but it was really nice to use Felicity Jane Christmas goodies for once and during Christmas for Christmas layouts. I had a lot of fun doing this. Um, but yeah, now that that's gutted, I'm going to patch that with some black really quick and then I'll finally be able to actually glue down all of these layers that I've been just patchworking together. Um, this is a really satisfying part when I really go from a bunch of little scraps of paper to everything being cohesive and glued down. So <laughs> I'm just trying to get everything secure. So there's the back and now you can see the front, the patch is in and I'm just gonna glue all this together. I love seeing the backs of these. It looks so ridiculous, but when you can really see how many layers went into making this on the back, it looks crazy and then you flip it over and it looks like a nice cohesive layering moment. So um, that's always satisfying. But yeah, I love it. It's so cute. All my layers are done now. I just wanna add a, a little bit. Um, I definitely want a title. I need to do some journaling. Um, it is looking a little boxy. I do love uh, the curve that Joy and this bow adds, but I thought adding this little white doily up here next to uh, the tag would be a really nice detail too. So I'm just popping that in there. Um, and then I think I, We'll probably work on my title next. I need something down here in the on the red and white stripe beneath this four by six. Um, I want something, but I tried to do an embellishment cluster. It really did like pulled away from the two clusters I already had. I feel like my clusters are pretty well balanced as it was. So I figured maybe I can do my title and my journaling down there. It would fill in the space, but it wouldn't create a third cluster that would compete with the two I already have balanced. So I am back with my favorite thickers ever, root beer float. I love these black foam thickers. Um, someone asked me where I got these and I, I wanna say it was Michael's, but I'm not sure. I know, I think uh, Joanne's or someone has the white version. I think Hobby Lobby has the white version, but I'm pretty sure the black ones I got from Michael's if I'm not mistaken, but I know you can get them on, on Amazon, I'm pretty sure, but they're root beer float, they're thickers from American Crafts and I love them, especially the black ones. <laughs> so I just spelled out family and then there's a couple asterisks. I decided to pop one in each cluster just so that, that bold black foam and dimension was elsewhere on the page to balance the title. And now I'm just doing my journaling on the diagonal beneath the family to fill in the space. It just says we visited Nana and Granddad for a late Christmas celebration since Thomas was home from Hawaii. Um, we were finally able to all go together. And then you can see in a couple photos, my granddad has a little, like, um, it looks like a napkin on his head, just a little bandage, because he had um, surgery on his head. So I just wanted to note that that's what that was from, so I'm not confused looking back on this, <laughs> why he has it on his head. Uh, so I just made a little note about that, but I just said, um, uh, we were so, uh, and they were so happy to get to see Bennett again, because <laughs> Bennett got to come too, so. Uh, got all of that down and then this label was bothering me. There was nothing in it. So I just said Webster because that's that side of the family is the Webster side of the family. So I just labeled it and here are the close-ups. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you check out everyone else playing along with Off the Board with Pineapple Papers. See what board they used and play along with us and use the pin. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye.